Hello guys, welcome to my first tutorial on Premiere Pro. Today I'm going to be going over the very basics so the interface, how to get started and in the next video I'll be going over exporting and how to export and using the right settings when exporting. Um, so firstly, when you open Premiere Pro you'll be welcomed by this. Now this is not scary, it shouldn't be, it's really quite simple. You probably won't see these if you've never used Premiere Pro before. Uh, you'll just see these options. Now, we're going to be starting a new project, so just click New Project, and you can completely ignore this tab. There is a lot of stuff in Premiere Pro that, especially for the beginners, I'm fairly new to Premiere Pro. There are hundreds of features that I don't even know about, but this tutorial, this tutorial series, is basically going over the basics and some more advanced stuff, but I won't really be going over color correction and stuff in this tutorial because m me myself I haven't even learned most of that but there are a lot of stuff that you probably will never use in Premiere Pro like scratch discs um, but when you first start all you need to do is hit browse here so this stuff you can totally ignore you could change that to that blah 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 it, if you're using capture format whatever then you can change that but I highly doubt you are so you know just you know don't need to you can just ignore basically all of that stuff so then hit browse and um you choose where you want the project to save now i recommend you make a folder first for this premiere pro files and stuff to go in because premiere pro does create a few files like a uh, preview files render files stuff like that and the project project file it doesn't just create one file so i recommend you have a folder because if you just like chucked it on your uh, videos it would just create files and it would be a bit of a mess so always have good organization with premiere pro it does sometimes take up some space but i would always recommend firstly making a folder so i'm just going to call this tutorial and if i just do that and then select that folder and then i'm just going to rename it to tutorial as well so that's what our project's going to be called and all we need to do now is press ok that's all fine the next thing is sequence presets you don't really need to worry about this because it does most of the work for you if you choose the wrong preset so what i mean by choosing the wrong preset if you recorded your video in 720p uh, but you accidentally or you just chose the 1080p format it doesn't really matter because when you actually select the video and put it into the timeline it will actually ask you if you would like to change the preset to match the video that you're using anyway it doesn't really matter this but if you do want to make sure you're choosing the right one just choose it it doesn't really matter because as you'll see later on it does a lot of the work for you so you can basically ignore that preset just choose any one really and then it'll base it off the video clip anyway this is what you'll be welcomed with four different sections here now uh, this is how I've actually customized it you will probably see it more like this because if I reset it that's how it comes so it will be it's basically the same There's I've just removed a few tabs that I don't need so let's start with this area here now this is where you can find your files this is where you put the files you're going to be using in this uh, project you just import them here so the best way I find is just to import them and basically find the file so if I want this file to be imported then I just right click import that file you can also do drag and drop um, like so I can just copy that file in there um, or you could use the media browser which is actually a separate tab here as you can see and you can browse your computer on here I personally don't like to use this I find it a bit cluttered it's kind of hard to read and I generally just prefer the import because it shows a much clearer view than if I go to media browser it's kind of in a tight space so once you've imported that you've got your video file here now you can see this is also a file that was created by Premiere Pro itself and I'll be talking about sequences in another video because they're they're quite they're not complicated but when you first start Premiere Pro sequences aren't really going to be the first thing you're thinking about so this is the file that I got from the computer and 
um, as I said you can import more files you can create new items now items I'll go over these later these are stuff like titles new sequences um, color mats this is more advanced stuff but here you can see the media so if you want to add more media you just simply it can be pictures videos um, Premiere Pro supports a whole bunch of different files so if I want this JPEG file here it will work pretty nicely and if I want to view that file all I need to do is just um, view that and because it's a picture it obviously doesn't have a you know, time uh, because it's one picture the pictures don't have a time code but if I want to check out this video here I just double click on it, it I don't have to drag and drop it on there I could if I if you want to you can drag and drop it no yeah you can but to be honest all you need to do is double click so this is the video file I'm going to be using now if I want to change uh, before I drag this into the timeline if I want to change you know when it starts because let's say I you know this part of the video I don't really want that part of the video what I need to do is press I and that will set the endpoint that means that when I drag this onto the timeline it will start from there so this part here won't be in the timeline but it will still be on the video here because that's how Premiere Pro works and then if I want to set an out point so let's say here just press O or you can also use these two buttons they do the same thing but I definitely advise you learning this keyboard shortcut this really does help and I'm gonna be going off this uh, keyboard shortcuts in this tutorial I'll probably do a video just on keyboard shortcuts so you can get used to it so here we go all I need to do now is drag it in I can drag the audio and video together if I just want the video all I need to do is hit this kind of video tab here or if I just want the audio I just hit that audio tap it now as I was talking about earlier the presets they don't matter because Premiere Pro is smart and the first video dragged onto the timeline it will if they it doesn't if the video doesn't match the preset all you need to do is hit change sequence settings and basically this means that the preset will match the video you don't really need to know too much about this but just make sure that you don't just make sure the preset and the video match to get the best looking uh, project and file so here you can see that's the video and it starts here where I set it and it ends there where I also set it so as you can see the timeline is pretty basic here if you want to zoom in more you just need to grab this um, this is like scroll bar and on the end you can see there's two kind of grey boxes dark grey boxes and you just drag those to zoom in more you can I believe control no yeah control uh, scroll does the scrolls through the different tracks on video or audio as you can see and the scrolling itself you can scroll through the video so however long it is so if we want to go back there that's awesome and then as you can see the video is playing quite nice and smoothly here uh, if I just want to view it all I need to do is press play here these are our media controls um, they're basically identical to the ones here uh, but this is as I say these are really similar these but this is not gonna this is not what's showing on this is what's showing on your timeline so that's what the video will look like and this is your media this is for viewing your media it, it's very easy to get the hang of but just make sure that if you're if you're wondering why this isn't moving this is because for me to view that I need to move this this isn't part of that really they're separate um, so yeah that's that plays nicely so I can press the play button I can also press the space bar to play um, and to get back to the start I just compress these that's also shift I and shift O like similar to in and out but that's when you want to start from the beginning uh, and we have these other stuff which you don't really need to get used to for now over here you'll see these now if I press full that means that Premiere Pro is playing the video at its full quality that's how it's going to look when you export it now you're probably like well why shouldn't I leave it on that well there's a good reason because 
if unless you have a really powerful computer um if you're putting even one video clip it's gonna start struggling because it needs to render if you're adding effects it's gonna start struggling to view it at full and to be honest if you look at a quarter yeah the quality doesn't look as good see it's all blurred and you know not as sharp but just remember when you export it that will be totally different and i'll go over exporting in in the next video but um as you can see let's go over this off so media browser i've gone over that that's where you can find your media info so if i select this it will tell me info about this uh, you don't really need to use these tabs unless you're going into detail effects um, has the audio effects video effects and transitions so uh, I'll be going over transitions and stuff later markers uh, that's completely more advanced not too advanced and then history basically that's kind of what you you've done so far so that's the bottom left section uh, gone over so here we have source that's the source i've gone over that already effects this is where if you select the video you can change stuff like the scale positioning um, rotation and if you <clears throat> get effects from here and you drag them onto the video clip you control the effects here so do you get that's where you get the effects from and then that's where you control the effects but at first you've got the basic effects and then you can add more from you know the video effects or audio effects then you have the audio mixer now this is where you control the level that you want to hear the audio at this is not the level that the audio will be exported at you change that in the effects control and if you have audio on that clip it will say audio and volume but this is where if you're listening to your track but you want to hear something else louder but you don't want it to sound quieter so if you want to reduce the sound of audio one you would reduce it there but when you export it it would actually be the same decibel level so here you can also record um your with your microphone now i can't show you that because i'm using the microphone that i'm recording with but you can record your microphone here so that's how you would do voiceovers pretty pretty simple then mate data this shows you loads of information about your movie um, this isn't really too necessary but if you are looking to you know do color correction or other stuff that might be useful uh, you also these tabs all of them you can move them around so you can move their location so if you don't for example need the media browser you can right click on it and then all you need to do is hit close panel here and that will close it you can also undock it so if you want it floating around so if i undock the panel i can have that separate from here so if you are multiple monitors this might be good if you want to have uh, if i and then uh, yeah if you want to have that on another screen and to rejoin it you just need to select it and you could even put it up here but you know i like to keep it where it's meant to be and you can just put that back in so you could do that with this right click undock panel and then you would have your preview separate that would be really good for multiple monitors because you could have a full size view and then this could be your editing area and then again to dock it back you need to make sure you're selecting the little dots at the top and then the purple thing will show and then just oh, oh, drag it there it's not right there you drag it there okay if you ever have a problem like this remember you can always just reset the current workspace that will completely change it back to the original way so if you ever screw up remember window workspace reset and you also have these different options you can change those to your liking so if you are more into color correction it will show you color correction options as well um, audio so that's if you're doing more music video type stuff um, editing is the one that we were in and if you've if you used to use CS5 
it would kind of go back to the CS5 layout. That wraps up this video. So I went over some of the nice features, the basic features, the interface, how it works. The next video is going to be more in depth on editing your clip, adding titles, uh, add more basic features, you know, the stuff you see here. And then later on, we'll go to kind of in depth, the nitty gritty of the software and um, I don't know how many parts this series will be but if you did find it useful or you enjoyed the video a like would be, be really appreciated um, if you want to see more videos like this of course subscribe because then you'll be notified when I make more videos and um, thanks for watching I'll see you very soon have a nice week